All right, coming up now, we're going to be uh, talking with uh, Andrew Hyatt, who's the director of uh, Paul the Apostle. And uh, I think it's something you're going to enjoy. Check it out. Uh, joined right now by Andrew Hyatt, the director of the new mo uh, movie, Paul the Apostle. Got off to a good start last weekend with a $5 million approximate uh, gross. Uh, Andrew, welcome. Thank you for having me, Randy. Yeah, it, 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 this seems like, um, you know, reading a little bit up on, on you and the movie, um, kind of a project of passion for you, directing it, writing it, <clears throat> everything else. Why, why this story? Well, you know, I, I tell everyone that that I swore off making Bible movies or Christian films. I never wanted to be in that <laughs> yeah. in that genre. had no had no interest uh, uh, at all, and and actually kind of felt like it was a step down from what I believed my uh, career trajectory could be. But uh, then I had an amazing, uh, you know, personal experience. I, I grew up in the church, but when I got to college, I was sort of like uh, what a lot of people do, you know, looking at the parties and the girls and the drugs and the drinking and said, whoa, that's way more exciting than this church thing. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, just uh, had no interest in faith or anything for about seven years. And then, um, yeah, just had a, a beautiful personal uh encounter with Christ and, and converted back to the faith. And, um, yeah, it, it was sort of a call of, Hey, you know, um, these, these are amazing stories. You know, you, you kind of knock these uh, Bible stories and, and these individuals, but you know, why don't you go back into this and, and look at them closely? And when I did, I just found, yeah, just sort of these, these unbelievable human, human drama stories that, uh, that are exciting to dive into. Well, it's interesting to me from a, from a, also from a current event standpoint, uh, keeping up on news for all, from all over the world, this movie is set in a period of time. Nero is the emperor of the Roman Empire at that point, um, and the Christian persecution is—it's not at its height, but it's—it's it's really, really going strong. And it seems nowadays there's not as much, but doesn't get the publicity it probably should. But especially in the Middle East. There's an incredible amount of Christian persecution going on. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, and, and that was just something that really uh, stuck out to all of us, um, including uh, Sony Pictures and Affirm Film. Um, way late in the process, you, through the through the editing, uh, when we were into the editing, uh, all of a sudden, we exactly as you say, we started seeing headlines and 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 thinking about what's going on in the world and we thought whoa that's crazy so so first century christians were dealing with the same thing that a lot of uh people around the world are dealing with that's that's crazy so it really is uh it's, it's surprising how relevant um these themes are and 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 including you know just even the idea of you know what do you do in the face of uh of a government that that disagrees with you and and wants to uh wipe you out you know <laughs> yeah. literally literally Hey, what was the particular challenges of bringing sort of this time, this this period to life, whether it was the, you know, a character like Nero or just recreating ancient Rome? There's nothing about that could, that could have been particularly easy. Yeah, you know, it's it was it was really tough. It was a real challenge. You know, how on, you know, we, we had a really small budget. You know, um, if, if your listeners know anything about sort of film budgets, you know, we, we had a five million dollar budget, which I know sounds like a lot of money. But it's really not, you know, when you start thinking of, you know, if I can put into comparison, you know, something that just came out, you know, like a Black Panther that probably cost about 180 to 200 million. So, mm -hmm. you know, we it, it, and we had uh, 23 days to shoot the film. So just sort of the challenge of how on a small budget with no time, really, do you bring to life first century Rome in a way that feels really authentic? Uh, so but we had an incredible team, incredible production designer, Dave Aerosmith out of Scotland that. um was just a very, very obsessive over the time period and over Rome and um, uh, just all of the little details he was able to bring out uh, on the budget we had is, is incredible. Well, how, how about the, the cast you put together? I mean, you talk about the, the budget, what you can and can't do, and, you know, the bells and whistles and CGIs and all the stuff we see in so many movies. But, you know, you've got a cast that stands up against as, as good a cast as any other movie out there. 
That's right. That's right. We an incredible cast. James Faulkner uh, from Game of Thrones, Downton Abbey, uh, fame, and uh, Jim Caviezel, of course, you know, uh, Passion of the Christ and Persons of Interest. And then Olivier Martinez, who, um, you know, has been around a long, long time. And, you know, we knew we needed such a strong cast because of of not having that budget, you're totally right to be able to kind of, you know, blow the world up, if you will, into this kind of spectacle you know, it needed to be a really dialogue driven, uh, you know, human drama driven film. And, you know, if we didn't have the cast that could support that, you know, it could have gone really bad for us. So just we're very grateful that um, they responded to the scripts. They really responded to the idea of, of, of the performances they could they could put into this. And uh, they did they did an incredible job, all three of them. You know, in, in talking to, to some people that have seen the film, I mean, it's only been out, what, since the 23rd, right? That's right. That's um, right. You know, the, some interesting reactions or surprised by some people in that in the in the theaters while they're watching it, one guy said to me, he goes, I heard people sobbing and crying in the theater. It's, it's been yeah, it's uh, it's incredible. I mean, uh, the audience response is, is very moving even to me. You know, I'm reading I, I'm reading, I think, the same things you are or hearing the same things you are, which is. You know, people saying, yeah, it was in the theater, um, you know, everybody around me sobbing. Uh, the, nobody moved until they turned the theater lights back on after the credits. You know, I mean, that's a, at least from my experience, a pretty rare, rare thing these days. Oh, yeah. Unless they're going to a Marvel movie, they always stay till the very end yeah. for the for the stinger. <laughs> that's right. But <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, no, no secret scene of, of, of Paul returning back to life at the end of this one. <laughs> When, when you look at the subject specifically of Paul, is there is there anything that relates to events and people today? You know, there's sort of these just major, you know, I keep calling them, you know, kind of the, the themes of the human condition, you know, of the human journey for all of us, whether you're a Christian or not a Christian. You know, these same themes of forgiveness, uh, grace, mercy, uh, love, like, like all of us, don't we want to feel loved? Uh, isn't that sort of the... The, the drama of our life, you know, we want to feel loved by others or, or loved by something. And, and Paul kind of brings this out, these questions out. And what I love about the film, we kind of took a very different approach. You know, again, I didn't want to make just a very uh, Bible something biblical film where it just preaches, preaches, preaches. I really wanted to kind of ask some very difficult questions that if somebody came to the film kind of rolling their eyes saying, yeah, that's Christian stuff, there really would be a dialogue, not just a, a, a preaching to them. So this character played by Olivier Martinez, the uh, the Roman character in the film, is a it's a great character. And I and what I'm hearing is the feedback is that he's he's such an accessible character because sometimes you know with the biblical figures, you know uh, Saint Paul, Saint Luke, these sort of big figures of the faith, um, they're a little inaccessible. But here's this ordinary man who comes into contact with these guys. He doesn't believe in anything they're saying, what they're doing. Um, but he has his own issues. His marriage is falling apart. His daughter's dying. She's got a terrible sickness uh, that nobody can seem to solve. And uh, it's it's great because it allows us to kind of ask these modern day relevant questions that I think are on everybody's minds. And like I, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. You guys opened up in what fourteen over fourteen hundred theaters nationwide. Yeah, we were just over fourteen hundred nationwide, uh, as well as Canada, and and then a couple of. Uh, of countries across the world, uh, South Africa uh, and uh, New Zealand and the Philippines. And then this week we open in Australia and a few others. So it's, it's exciting. Yeah. What are the particular challenges uh, of doing a faith-based movie from that standpoint, from the distribution standpoint? Because like you said, you talk about a, a Black Panther or a, 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 any other Marvel movie or, you know, action movies. I mean, there's no bang, bang, shoot 'em ups no, no CGI, right. no special effects, um, you know, it's and real, realistically, it's, it's not going to gross uh, $500 million. Um, but, you know, there's definitely a market for this kind of film. It is a little more difficult, but I, I, was, I will say... Um, you know, there is a huge market and you do run into kind of this, unfortunately, you know, they're so hit or miss that you do kind of have, you really need word of mouth. And, and we're thankful for that because that's, that's the big secret sauce because, you know, there are a lot of biblical films that come out all the time uh, and there are a lot of faith-based films that come out all the time, 
But in a way, um, because you don't have the big anticipation of a Marvel film, you know, a character Black Panther or, or Thor or, you know, Spider-Man or whatever, you, you kind of have this, every time you have to start over, start the machine over and say, okay, this is a movie about this, and this is why you need to go see it, and this is why you should support it. So I think Affirm Films and Sony are doing a wonderful job by starting sort of on a smaller release, you know, 1,400 screens as opposed to, you know, 3,500 or 4,000 where you'd see a, a major, major studio uh, uh, Marvel film. And, um, you know, they're just hoping that this buzz and this word of mouth continues and we just kind of have a steady, steady drift through, um, you know, let's hope through May. You know, I, ideally, that does happen and, and, it's, and it keeps going and it builds momentum. What would you like people to be talking about when they discuss this film? Because there's always that one thing that people associate usually with a movie, you know, whether it's three billboards and in, in ebbing or one of the other types of movies like that, that are the more artistic types that don't have all the mm. flashes and bells and whistles. But what would you like people talking about when they talk about Paul the Apostle? Yeah, I hope I hope we have people leaving and we do. You know, we're seeing it on all the social media and, and the buzz on 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 these things is you know, cinematically first, it's excellent. You know, I, I love to hear that. I love to hear that we took a, a biblical film and, and cinematically made it interesting, you know, where people say, well, it's just the cinematography, the the, the score, the, uh, you know, a, a, the performances, it's phenomenal. Um, you know, that's a good thing because a lot of faith-based films are, are not that. I, I think I can be blunt and, and say that. Um, and, and then we hope that people are leaving Really, you know, the the strongest thing we've heard is people leaving saying, I really need to think about my life. Like, what a powerful, powerful thing to be able to communicate through art, through a, me through a medium like film, is having people leave the theater and really kind of saying, hey, there's some, there's some deep things in this that I really need to go, go home and think about. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know about you, but that's rare for me. You know, I usually watch a film and, and you know, an hour later, I forgotten which film i watched <laughs> yeah it's usually to kind of escape and or unplug that's right that's right so so it's uh it, it'll be interesting if it continues to push people to this hey i saw this movie this week and you got to go see it this week it, it's it's really powerful and it's really something that that's gonna you know maybe not so far as change your life but at least have you uh you know uh, uh, wrestle with some things in your life well i can personally say you've got to go see this movie it's a great movie uh, and you really will enjoy it, even if you, uh, even if you're not of a particularly religious ilk. To be honest with you, I th I really enjoyed it. Well, thank you, Randy. I'm, I'm glad you got to see it as well. All right. Well, Andrew, so thank you so much for uh, for joining us, Andrew Hyatt, director, Paul the Apostle. Go see it, check it out, and Andrew, thank you so so much for joining us. Thank you, Randy. God bless, man. All right. Thank you very much.